Ah, Tahu, what a fantastic set. Let's discuss why this set rocks and how we can use the pieces that come in this set in our own LEGO creations. And we'll highlight a few revamps of Tahu as well. Let's dive in. Tahu, the quarterback of the football team, the lead singer in the band, the poster boy for Bionicle itself. Everybody loves Tahu. And let's face it, LEGO always did an incredible job when they designed the Tahu specific sets. And G2 Tahu? Well, he's no exception. He's one of the best. Beautiful red and gold armor, swords that stick out of his back, or swords that can droop backwards. But when they stick up like this, it looks way cooler. He's also got awesome silver fire blades, which look very similar to the blades he had in his Toa Nuva form back in 2002. Tahu Nuva could also easily convert these blades into a lava board. And Tahu G2, well, he can do the same thing. And then while he's using these weapons as a board, he can take down those golden blades and use those to fight off the bad guys. What a great idea. I'm so glad that they kept the iconic imagery of Tahu surfing on lava. As a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing on G1 sets. If we didn't get that on G2 sets, it would be a bit of a crime, let's be honest. It's a tough task to reinvent Tahu's mask. It's so iconic and it's easily one of the best masks ever. Now, I know some people don't really like the G2 version, but I think it's great. A slightly different shape to the indent on the mouth area. This one's a little bit more sharp and rounded. The original was a lot more smooth. And you can say the same for the rest of the mask. Everything's a lot more angular and sharp. I think it's the best they could do to upgrade this legacy mask. The overall look of this character really effectively captures a heroic and courageous guy. From the additional armoring on the shoulders to the buff looking chest design, he looks like a leader. He looks like a noble Toa. But what about the pieces in this set? The awesome silver blades that you get in this set are a great inclusion. Boncarella has built a mock called Morinda the Salvation. And it uses these blades on this arm design here. Yet using them as less of a blade and more like a structural frame to help really shape this whole arm design, what a great idea. The way this mock also uses pistons, tubing, gears, all sorts of stuff on the arm, it gives off an awesome mechanical and industrial feeling. And this blade, it blends in perfectly with this. Like metal scaffolding or structural supports that you would see on some type of unarmored robot. What a great look. Explosive Tortuga uses this weapon for a lava board on Toa Lakan. You know, the original Toa Lakan set, he had weapons that were remarkably similar to Tahu G2's weapons. And he could even turn those blades into a board for himself. So look, if you're gonna revamp Lakan, you may as well just give him these more updated blades. They serve pretty much the exact same purpose, but it just looks a little bit more fresh and new. That's a really snazzy look, isn't it? So I mentioned that awesome mask before. This set of course comes with an awesome gold variant of this mask like every single G2 Masters set does. Now I also mentioned Lacan before. Well, why not do what Ghost Hunter Gun has done here and use this mask to revamp Lacan? You know, it's funny. This works weirdly well at recreating that iconic character. Pairing that mask with dark red, adding some pearl gold armor, so stylish. I love seeing G1 characters recreated with G2 pieces. That's such a fun challenge. It forces you to think outside the box a little bit and, you know, do something like this. Use G2 Tahu's mask for Lacan. If you just wrote that down on paper and said, hey, this is what I'm going to do, I would think it wouldn't work. But seeing it in action here, it works really well. So start playing with your G2 pieces and build some G1 characters. Erdak Lord of Cinder by James Saik360 also uses this mask, but not as a mask. If we zoom in on the waist here, we can see two of these masks have been angled a little bit and they're used for some pretty cool waist armor. Always a good idea to use masks, but not as masks. Plus, I love how this waist armor here beautifully complements a lot of the other gold highlights and the beautiful gold mask on this mock. Really nice idea to include those down here. Tahu comes with three of these red torso armor pieces. He also boasts a pretty nice array of red CCBS armor pieces. So why not use all of them like Turaga Maxil has done here on this ancient Makuta mock? You know, all this sick red armor together like this, it's beautiful. And you get so much of it just from buying the one set. So why not put it to good work and build another character of your own design using all of these beautiful red armor pieces? Tahu and many of the other G2 Toa come with these little gear pieces. If you want to build a cool play feature into your next mock, well, these are going to be super helpful. Or you can do what Mitch Henry did here and just use them for aesthetic purposes. Your gears, I think, are so essential to the vibe of Bionicle. So just placing them randomly on your creation, even if they don't serve any purpose, is probably going to look cool. Give it a try. Tahu comes with a skull spider, but this one is yellowish green. 
I remember when this set first came out, I bought this expecting this to glow in the dark. It unfortunately does not. That would be so cool though, I would totally buy a glow in the dark skull spider. Anyway, if you want to use this, of course, you could use this for a mask, like the set intended, or do what Max Howell has done here, placing one underneath this head design and using it for a jaw, as well as littering them across the rest of the body like scales or, I don't know, just different pieces that make up the shape of the body. That's a very clever way of using them. Now let's see how he could use Tahu's printed torso piece on this mock. Fu Min imagines the Egyptian god Horus, and I like that he's placed this printed torso piece on the torso. It's a good way to break up the gold a little bit and add in a nice tertiary colour. Plus when he's holding this weapon it has some nice red accents on it and that complements the torso as well. Mitch Henry also uses two of this piece on this mock. Placing them sideways on the torso like this, it looks rather nice. And, and hey, that's such a helpful way to look at using pieces on a mock. Can you place it the way it was intended on the set? What about placing it upside down? What about placing it on its side? Just thinking like that is such a great way to open up your mind and think of new ways of using pieces. Alright, now let's look at some Tahu G2 revamps. Ron Falkus has built a mock called Tahu. Now, Ron states that this isn't actually Tahu, even though it looks a lot like him. This is actually their own custom character and they haven't figured out a name yet. Or at least they're keeping the name a secret. But you know, seeing a red armoured Toa using Tahu's mask with lots of silver armour to complement it. Oh, I do like that. You know, the gold and the red that came on the set, it's very pretty. But silver and red for Tahu G2? Why not? Plus the Hero Factory chest piece combined with those silver shoulder pads. It's such a nice combo, it makes him look so heroic. Despite the fact that this isn't actually Tahu, it looks like a really good Tahu mock. Jakku builds reimagines Tahu, but this one is orange and red. No fancy shiny armor at all this time. And dude, I love this sword. A sweet giant fire blade that is almost as tall as Tahu is. <laughs> yeah. And check out some of these additions to the back of the mask, giving him some kind of, I guess, spikes sticking out of the back. I like that. We also get some cool Technic panel pieces on the waist and the shoulders. They make him look really stylish. You know, I can really get behind this radically different body design for Tahu. It works. Although I do think this revamp might be my favourite. Shubi4000 has made the Mighty Tahu. And this revamp is certainly taking notes from G1 Tahu. The layout of the colours, it certainly seems very similar to the original G1 set. And you know, seeing all of those beautiful original colours paired with that G2 mask, it's actually an incredible combination. And this magnificent sword as well, using the Technoblade piece that came on this Ninjago Dragon set here. Well, it looks great on Tahu. In this context, it transforms into some type of flame sword rather than some sort of technological blade. I love it. Shubi4000 nailed it on this mock. So that's Tahu G2. He is an incredible set with lots of great pieces, and there's a lot of good ways that you could revamp this character as well. Hopefully what you saw today can give you a little bit of inspiration, and if you have any of these pieces in your collection, you'll know exactly how to use them. Thanks so much for watching guys, I love you tons, happy building, and bye for now.